Welcome back to Krachwerke and here we attempt to recreate the kind of classic death scooped guitar sound and we're doing it all in the door with Ampsums in this case I did my utmost to get it done in Amplitude so enjoy <laughs> So the question was, does Amplitude death? And my verdict would be, no, it doesn't. Um, I just couldn't get it uh, right. It sounds great, but it's not death. Um, the other problem is like, usually is that death, uh, like so many other bands that you kind of try and recreate, is you either have to be specific and go for a specific album because the album uh, tones are quite different actually, quite vastly different. Or you go, like I tried to do, um, is you go for the overall feel. Like when you listen to that record, what the overall kind of feel is of um, the album and the guitar, the guitar tone. So this is what I was chasing. So there was a couple of elements I really wanted to get. Um, uh, into the guitar tone and also the mix and that was that really uh, um, There's like a little bit of a fizz at the top, but it's a clean fizz. Uh, it's not like a, a, a Ugly fizz. It actually has some harm harmonics to it. And then you have quite a scooped uh, typical scooped sound 
and then um, you have a, a real I want to say clean distortion on the bottom end because what I mean by that is that it's not a fuzzy dirty it is actually you can hear the speaker struggle and this is like always this is where the the sims and the uh, IRs and all of them really fall flat is that you you really struggle to recreate that amp being pushed the speaker struggling with them uh, introducing their own tonalities onto onto the tone at best they give a rough eq curve of a speaker but they don't really recreate that oh my god i'm fucking dying here kind of uh you know struggling um and that kind of uh it, it gives its own distortion and you can get that on the Amsim. So you can get a really nice tone and you can get a really heavy tone, but there's something missing at the bottom end, which just doesn't, it's just not enough. You know, you always want that a little bit more. Um, also, we know what he used. He used uh, quite high output um, pickups. He used valve states uh, quite often. Um, um, Marshall 800s, um, some Randalls. Uh, and honestly, I went through everything I could to try and recreate this. Um, there is no valve state, no proper valve state um, amp on um, on Amplitude. So I um, I went through all the different Marshalls, even the 800. Um, I tried the um, the 75s, the Marshalls uh, um, speakers. Um, I think that's actually what's uh, what's in the um, what's in the preset now. But the only one I could get close to was actually the Jubilee one, so the silver one, um, which we'll go through in a minute. But essentially, um, it was really difficult to get that bottom end to really growl. And what I mean by clean bottom end is like there is you can hear that popping of the speaker. It's like a uh, and then there's like this massive mid scoop and then there's like in the not too high end there's a lot of information again with a little bit of fuzz uh, to keep it just a slightly dirty but it's not an ear annoying fuzz it is just great tones that they had all over the records and they were vastly different so every time you do this you kind of go oh, and you kind of listen to the albums again and then you go okay so which one they actually if you really listen to it they're all completely different um, tones and on top of that, there's also the issue of mixing. Um, what we hear in an album is absolutely not what the guitar sounded like in uh, in the studio or in real life or, or sometimes even in uh, live situations. And so I also do look at live stuff and I see what the tone was on that. And usually I end up trying to mimic the live stuff because that's that's what he does. That's what he would set up on stage. That, that's how he would dial or whatever artist we're talking about. That's what, how they would dial um, the amps in. Um, so I'm trying to create the overall sound of that era of death and that kind of metal. The other problem is that I can't play like him and I can't write like him. So I kind of try to uh, put in a few elements into the mix uh, that I felt were relevant to try and um, make it sound like that. But overall, you know, it sounds great. I, I like the sound actually that was achieved, but I don't think it's a proper death sound. Um, there's also, you know, the whole aspect of why even try, because it, in, in all aspects of death, there was so much genius. All the artists and drummers and bassists that he got in to do the different albums, his writing, his playing, the whole era that this was done, the whole attitude. I mean, it is trying to bottle that is fucking pointless. You know, it is it is impossible. Um, but uh, you can get pretty decent kind of 80s thrash and death tones, 90s thrash and death tones. Um, you, you can get away with it. And I think once it's all in the mix, and there's quite a few things I did in the in the mix to kind of try and help the situation. Um, there goes my... That was my microphone, apologies. So anyway, um, I think overall it was a success, but not a success when it relates to actually trying to capture that fucking sound that they had and and that all the albums had that real deep like we're serious about fucking metal right uh, kind of sound. Um, it's a bit too polished this um, and there's there's lots of little elements in the tones that are just for me not there. They're attempted and they're present, but they are not there. 
Um, and honestly, I've tried all the speakers. I've even the only one I didn't try, not speakers, the amps. I the only one I didn't try was a Mesa Boogie. Um, I don't know why. Probably because I uh, and the fifty one fifty because their their whole s shape is completely different. So um, I didn't bother. But I even tried the Engel because the Engel is so. Um, shapeable with the tone controls and where you boost, where you shape the mids uh, and cut the mids is quite, uh, um, and, and it's quite clean over the, you know, it, it's quite, uh, you've got quite a lot of options in your bass, uh, your um, your two mids and your your highs and your presence. And, and when you when you do shape your tone, there's a, there's quite a sweep you know, you've got quite a bit to play with to try and get the tone. But again, even that, I didn't, um, I don't think I achieved it with that. So I actually ended up with uh, the Jubilee one, uh, the, the silver one, the same as the Slash one and stuff like that. But we'll see that properly when uh, we go through the settings and stuff like that. So let's have a quick dive into what's been done. <clears throat> so, um, Put the mix in again at the back but anyway so um the amp i ended up using was the brit uh, silver model um and you can see that the mids were taken out quite a bit and um, when you start putting so it's really kind of dull when you do that but when you put the presence back up uh, the, the kind of overall mids come back into play and um, you can get some sort of sound without it. It doesn't really work that well. So just to give you an idea. So that's the main kind of rhythm sound that I ended up with. Um, there's still not, I can't, I can get enough into the bottom um, and obviously there's now effects on the back of that as well some EQing and stuff like that um, right where are we so so here's the setting I used a tube screamer I tried the distortion which is the distortion of the boss distortion pedal that he uses but it didn't work very well um, it created a weird singing noise so I just used um, the Tube Screamer again in its classic way, drive all the way down, tone just over the middle and full level. Um, I also used the EQ because he used high um, output pickups and so I pushed, the, um, I pushed that a little bit. And if you look at the amp input here, You'll notice that it's quite high. Um, try and really push the front end of the amp, if you know what I'm saying. The cab, let's see what I did use. The modern M1, it was the one ended up, so I possibly didn't use the 75s. No, I did, I did. I think I changed, I think I changed the um, the speakers inside to Brit 80 and the, and the 75 with uh, combined with the um, SM57. And then some graphic EQ, get rid of that really low end. And that's really the whole chain, right? I mean, that's pretty much that. Um, and on the lead. Pretty much had the same settings put the presence down a bit by the looks of things um, I added a chorus but as you can see the rate and the depth and the level are kind of pulled down a bit it gives a little bit of a flutter um, and a kind of haunting kind of tone to it um, but otherwise the amps on the same setting however as you can see I used the metal T1 um, because it's a tighter bottom end. Um, let's see if I change the speakers. No, I did not. Um, I obviously used the reverb. Um, and this reverb is really heavy. So th this is actually, I mean, if you listen to it. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, to get a little bit more haunting sound out of the um, leads, I also double tracked them um, on. Um, uh, let me show you. Um, so the the one was played uh, octave higher than the other one. So if you listen to the two together. <laughs> And in the mix, if you listen closely, they at a certain part, they slightly play different things. Um, but again, same settings. Um, I didn't do a chorus on this one because I put a delay on this one. So... <laughs> So if you then listen to the two together, you get actually a really nice tone. See the two different versions there? That's the build up. So that's it for the settings, really. Um, let's get these things back where they were. Okay. And so um, I did the the channel strip from Air Windows as well, which um, puts some harmonics and coloration of a Neve, and I didn't push it too hard. Um, and I did exactly the same on the rhythm. Firstly, I compressed it um, quite a bit. Uh, well, actually, not that much. Ratio 2.6. Um, but again, it's more for coloration. Um, the, this one here is used to drop out the palm mutes. If you look at this here, so you don't get that you know that build up, that bass build up on the uh, on the palm mutes. Uh, again, a channel strip, a neve uh, coloration, um, and the freak EQ actually helped me a lot to scope to shape the tone at the end. Um, so here, here this. Actually listening to it now, that's the problem. You listen to something back and you think, oh, maybe this was actually better without it. Anyway, there you are. Um, and then the last thing I also put up was one more EQ for final shaping. Uh, so what I like to do is I use like to make the big moves and the moves that really add the coloration in the mix um, with um, things that mimic desk emulators or you know famous or uh, uh, um, compresses that color um, and then the final tweaks to the EQ is then just done in a in a quite clean um, transparent kind of EQ uh, which doesn't color. So just if there's any final shaping uh, to be done. So, and that is pretty much it. So there you go. That is the whole thing. Um, let's put that on again. The, uh, the Freak EQ was put on to to put it to like punch it through the mix a little bit, um, although, but it, you only really need it in certain parts. Like in the main rhythm piece, when there's nothing else playing, it's fine. Um, on the other pieces, it's uh, it's not fine. And so through the lead, and you want to still hear a little bit of definition on the rhythm, the the, the EQ settings that I put on the the, the desk um, EQ 
helps, um, but it's not entirely necessary. Uh, let's quickly look at the bass, because I think I've got a really nice bass sound going this time. So I put a chorus on it again, um, and the reason is to get that haunting sound, as you can hear. The um, multiband compressor is required for the mix, um, not for the sound. Because there's so much bottom end, the double bass pedal, the palm mutes, um, the strings, the, the guitar is tuned down to drop C, uh, and then the bass on top of that, everything riding, you need to control the bottom end so that it doesn't get muddy like. Actually, listening, I really like it. It's just that, uh, to me, it is not a perfect death tone, and that's fine with me because um, I'm a massive fan, huge respect for them, and um, yeah. What can I say? Thank you very much for watching. Oh, please subscribe. Uh, everybody begs for subscriptions. Um, I'm trying to get to the thousand, and it would really mean a lot um, to get to that point. Um, and obviously, to support, you can go to um, you can go to uh, my um, buy me a coffee, or Patreon, or buy some IRs. Um, they're only like a pound, and they're really good, actually. So thank you very much. Take care.